All right, we're going to get started here. Um, we're going to open with a statement from Coach Mooney, then we'll, uh, we'll take questions from our student athletes. Uh, we're joined today by Jacob Yulier and Tyler Burton. Um, Coach, want to open up with a statement? Sure. Uh, well, you know, I couldn't be more proud of our guys. Um, that was a tremendous effort, uh, particularly a, a great defensive effort against one of the best offenses in the country. Um, you know, Big Ten champs, that's a, a tremendous win for Richmond, tremendous win for these particular guys. Um, I haven't seen the stats yet, but I know Jacob was incredible. Uh, Tyler, I thought, was incredible. Nate KO late was terrific. Um, but really for us, everybody, everybody contributed. We fought through foul trouble, um, which was something I was concerned about. Uh, but just a, a great win for Richmond. And uh, we're very, very proud and very excited to advance. Uh, we'll take questions for the student athletes. Uh, we can begin here in the front. We'll bring a microphone down. Right here in the front, go ahead. Thank you, John O'Connor, Richmond Times Dispatch. Jacob, what was the key in keeping the pace where Richmond wanted it against a team that averages 84 points? Um, I don't think we were too scared to play at their pace. Uh, at the end of the day, we just had to guard. We had to make it tough. Obviously, it was going to be tough trying to guard Keegan. Um, but I think we did a really good job uh, overall as a team, not just Andre or Nate or Tyler. I think overall we did a really good job on them. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, we knew it would be tough for them to guard us. So I felt like we could, we could score with them if, as long as we could you know, contain the guys. I think we did a really good job defensively. Okay. For both players, your poise spoke for itself throughout this game. When did the belief enter the equation you could win this game? Um, probably last Thursday. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, we knew uh, that we're a tough team to scout, the way we run our offense, um, how many older guys we have. You know, it's, it's tough to try and guard us. Um, we're, we're a fairly confident group, and I, I think last weekend, you know, um, showed that, and I don't think anybody doesn't believe in, in, our, in each other. You know, 1 through 20, our guys in the locker room believe in one another, and, and we go out there and show it. All right, in the back. Andre Robinson, Challenger Community News. Jacob, you had no problem shooting today, and we could talk analytics, but how does it really feel right now to send one of the nation's best teams home dirt net? <laughs> Give them a dirt net. Um, yeah, no, it feels good. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm excited. Uh, I'm happy for, for my guys more so than for myself. You know, uh, we deserve to be here, but we knew that that's not enough. You know, you got to go out there and make your own luck, and we did that today. There's a question up front here. Can you get him a microphone, please? Noah Goldberg, ESPN Richmond. Uh, guys, uh, excellent defensive performance today, but this is really going back five games for you now throughout the A-10 tournament, holding teams under 70 points. Over these last five games defensively, what's changed for you guys? Uh, <coughs> I think we all personally bought in, you know. Uh, from top to bottom, we all, we all really just dig in on defense. We focus a lot on it in practice. And uh, just overall, uh, that, was, that was our weakness this year, I think. And uh, for us to just come full circle at the end of the year and really dig in these last five games, like you said, it's unbelievable. The, the bench has done a really good job. I mean, you know, we've got 20 guys on the team. Uh, a couple guys can't even sit on the bench. Um, the energy's been great from them. I mean, it, it's easy to go out there and work hard for those guys when they're supporting us how they do. So it's been really easy for us. In the back. This is for either of you guys. Can you talk about Nathan's defense and just how, how much he was able to come up in the clutch today? Um, he was fantastic. Um, you know, words won't really do him justice. Uh, offensively, defensively, you know, he kind of, kind of saved us. Kind of had some some Matt Grace heroics uh, towards the end of that game. Um, you know, he, he got a got a big time and one, but. You know, I think it started when he when he got matched up with with Murray. I think he did a really good job defensively, and that kind of got himself going. And uh, obviously, defense led to our offense today, and, and he did a really good job. Another question up front here, or right here. Jacob, just looking at your journey, you've said it, it hasn't always been glamour or hasn't always been pretty. You know, there's been ups, there's been downs. You went under recruited this time of year. What it means for a player? What can you speak to this moment, what it means for you to do this for Richmond and, and this moment just when you think about the journey to get here, to now be on this stage? 
and um, it's it's incredible. You know, at the end of the day, um, when I was a freshman and, or when I was a senior in high school, I decided to, to bet on myself and, and bet on Richmond. Um, turns out, four years later, as a as a senior, I did the same thing: bet on myself and bet on Richmond, and it's paid off. Um, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm happy for for the guys I've got to do it with for four and five years. I'm happy for Coach Mooney, but you know, I, I feel like me personally, I, I was built for this. Like this is this is who Jacob Gilliard is. Any other questions for our student athletes? All right, we'll excuse them. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll continue with the co uh, questions for Coach Mooney. Uh, we can start here in the front here, sir. Well, I, you know, I think um, certainly the result, uh, but yeah, I, I feel like it's so uh, challenging to guard them because um, while they have a, an NBA level player, you know, he's not, um, you know, they, they don't run quite as many plays as some teams. Their patterns are a little bit more reads. Um, and he's a pretty selfless player for someone so great. Uh, so, which makes me more nervous because uh, you know, just him being able, we, we'd have so much attention on him. Um, I thought that, you know, Jacob not only played a tremendous game offensively and controlling the game, but he guarded Bohannon the whole time. <clears throat> only got, and uh, one time we were mismatched in transition. He was able to get a three. And another time uh, he got a three while Jacob was guarding him. But that was really, that was really the only one. So, <clears throat> you know, was very, very anxious about guarding such a prolific offensive team. Um, but one thing I thought that we had multiple guys that we could put on Murray. Not that we could stop him or guard him, but we had multiple guys that we could put on him. We started with Andre, foul trouble limited that. Uh, Tyler guarded him most of the rest of the first half, and, and then Andre and Nate guarded him down the stretch. And I thought, you know, again, he, he's a tremendous player, but I thought we did a very good job on him. Right, right here. Yep. Chris, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. John Fanta, Field of 68. Jacob just summed up the journey. And you talked a little bit about it yesterday, that journey of getting here. When, when you think about this moment for you and your program, you said it means a lot to Richmond. Why? Well, you know, Richmond has a great basketball tradition. And um, there are teams, there are schools around the country that mean a lot to Richmond fans, uh, Auburn, Indiana, Georgia Tech, Vanderbilt, that are teams that we've won NCAA tournament games against. And, you know, it's, it's so hard to make this tournament. And for our guys to have um, done everything they did, starting with coming to Richmond, sec uh, next was returning to Richmond. For everything that they did, to be in the hotel uh, ballroom in Brooklyn two years ago when everything be canceled when we had a great season, to just you know, have the perseverance and the togetherness and the camaraderie to want to be at Richmond. That's what's special to me is, um, especially in this day and age, you know, guys are great players. These guys have done it and committed to Richmond. And uh, as someone who's part of Richmond, that means that much more to me. All right, in the back. Coach, it seems like the Big Ten, among all the Power, power Five, Power six, six conferences, the A-10 takes a little extra uh, pleasure in, in beating and proving its worth as a conference. What do you think today showed about the Atlantic 10? Well, um, you know, we're, 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 a, we're a very good team. We have um, probably six really good teams in our conference. You know, unfortunately, we only have two, two that can go. Just, it just illustrates how difficult it is. You know, we don't have those opportunities late where we might get back-to-back -back home games against two ranked teams. When, you know, I, I'd, like our, I'd like an A-10 team's chances in that, in that uh, scenario. So we have great depth and really good players and commitment and great coaching. Um, you know, that, that means a lot to us. I, I think that, obviously, you know, I think the world of Iowa, of Fran, they just won the Big Ten championship. Um, 
But when you go out there, you know, when we take the floor, you know, I don't see anybody that can guard Jacob necessarily. Uh, I, I feel like Tyler could have a big game. Grant could have a big game. So it's not as much, once you get past the conference or the, you know, the uh, size of the school or whatever it is, you're just playing and then you're starting to focus on the, on the X's and O's. So uh, it means a great deal, uh, but I think there are a lot of teams in our league capable of it. Back. Coach, you talk about team and tradition, and you seem like a selfless guy yourself, but what does the Chris Mooney culture look like? What does that look <laughs> like? You listed off a name of teams that you have went through in the tournament, but what does that culture look like? You know, I think our culture is, um, I think it's built, one, on trust. Um, I feel like we try to not bring guys in who are going to be, uh, have a lot of issues. I, I saw Fran comments about Murray said that he's no maintenance and that he wasn't low maintenance he's no maintenance for at Richmond we feel like that's the standard is no maintenance you know we have a, a tremendous school with 3,000 students you know it would be hard to be a jerk uh, at Richmond during the course of your day you know there'd be a lot of people who would notice that uh, at this point there'd be a lot of people who would report that to me uh, but I think it's built on trust uh, I really trust our guys because we've tried to recruit them the best, the very best we can get in terms of character. Uh, and then I do trust them. I, I trust them to make the right decisions. I trust them to um, pass along to the younger guys what they've learned. Uh, and this senior class especially has done, has done that to a very high degree. Up front here, or we'll start going the back and then we'll come to where you're off. Coach Mitty, last week, last Thursday, going in in the A-10 tournament, there's probably a good chance that, unless you run the table out there, that you may have not been in the tournament. Now, coming up to today, you run the table, you win today. What's that say about these guys in, in that locker room, what you guys have accomplished, and, and you're out there and the crowd's cheering you on to try to you know, pull this upset? What, what's that say about yourself? Well, I tell you what, when, uh, when these guys decided to come back, there was a lot of excitement, you know, first and foremost for me, but our fans and our everybody was very, very excited. And we had some really heart-wrenching losses. You know, we lost at the buzzer uh, a couple of times, whether we missed a shot or, or the other team made a shot. And I would tell the guys at that point that as much as you don't want to hear this, that's part of the reason you came back. You know, you didn't come back. We weren't going to go undefeated. It wasn't going to be all perfect like their careers haven't been perfect. Uh, and I said, this is part of the reason you came back is to handle that adversity, handle those losses, um, and to, to, uh, to rebound, to show perseverance, to come through. Um, and the guys certainly have done that um, in a great way all season, but especially this last week. Chris, Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Um, I want to bring you back to a, a couple of late buckets uh, by Nathan. Uh, first of all, you guys did a great job scoring inside. Did you think that that was going to be the way yep. you, you, be, you beat them up? And, and secondly, how big were those baskets when, especially one of those shots was pretty spectacular? Yeah, for sure. Um, those were really big. You know, Nate's one of my favorite Richmond Spiders ever. Um, you know, uh, he's just been a, a very diligent worker and somebody who has. Um, just done so many things for us over the course of time. And just, you know, he, he, I feel like he's the kind of guy who loves the work, the work that goes into it. And those baskets were big. I, I did think we would be able to score inside. And I feel like we missed some in the first half. I thought we missed some baskets around the rim. But he had those two baskets late. One was an and one. Uh, really, really impressive. You know, we're very committed to throwing the ball inside, very committed to sharing the ball. Uh, and that could show up to be anybody. And today, those big baskets were Nate. And uh, I couldn't be happier for him because of how much he, he, he brings to our program and to our, to our school. All right, any further questions here? We do have a question via Zoom. Oh, wow. And it's going to come over audio here. So we're going to try this. We tried this the first time. It did not work. So let's, uh, Tanner, you want to try to bring that question up? If you did. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. This is uh, oh. Daniel Rodriguez, I believe is the name, correct? Yes, Daniel Rodriguez. Yep, we can hear you. Go ahead and ask the question. Uh, Coach, uh, first I want to say congratulations on the big win. Um, 
you know, the, the thing about the tournament is one game ends and you have to worry about the next one almost immediately. Um, I wanted to ask, what do you know about the Friars and what you're looking forward to playing Providence and Coach Cooley? Yeah, I know very little about them. I saw them today for the first 10 minutes of the second half. They look big, strong, talented, uh, but I don't know much uh, about them just yet. Uh, I know Coach Cooley. I think he's probably one of, uh, one of the smartest um, people that I've, that I've ever met. You know, he's hilarious, uh, just a tremendous part of college basketball. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, uh, he, he just makes, he makes the game better by, by virtue of being in it. So we'll, we'll get ourselves prepared and hopefully we'll find out when we're playing Sunday and, or I'm sorry, Saturday and um, make the most of our scout. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Joined by Jordan Bohannon, Connor McCaffrey, and Keegan Murray of Iowa, as, long, as well as head coach Fran McCaffrey. Uh, again, we'll begin with uh, uh, questions for the student athletes. Please just raise your hand, and we will bring the microphone around to you. So, whatever is a question, raise your hand, and uh, we'll begin. <coughs> yep. Hey, leave the microphone right there for you, sure. Start with you, Jordan. Um, Chad Lastico, Des Moines Register. Um, walk me through the second half there, and uh, in your eyes, uh, what led you guys to come up short? Well, Richmond's a really great team. You know, I thought we played um, one of our worst basketball halves in all season, the first half, and we were only down one. Um, so we knew we had a little bit of light still in us, and. Um, we made a little bit of a run, but you know, you got to credit them. They did everything great tonight. You know, they were locked in and um, they're playing some of their best basketball of the season right now. Yep, right here in the aisle. Tom Caker, Hawkeye Report. Keegan, did they do anything defensively to kind of frustrate you during the game? Uh, they're just physical, um, and they brought a lot of guys anytime I was driving. Um, to the basket or in the paint area. Um, so it was really nothing new to me, but I was able to find a lot of guys in kickouts, uh, things like that. So I really felt like I didn't have to score the ball as much this game. Um, a lot of guys got involved, like Patrick. Um, he had a lot of good open looks. A lot of our guys had open looks uh, from our kickouts. And um, yeah, I just, they had a good game plan. Um, but 
Uh, we just missed open shots. All right, in the back. Anything uh, positive you take from this game and anything you think you need to learn as far as uh, your game and, and dealing with pace and things of that nature? Because Richmond, obviously, speed, had a lot of pace, uh, dictated the pace for most of the game. Uh, I think for us, it's really just on next year. Um, go through the off season again, uh, get better. Um, we put a stamp on this program, uh, I feel like, positively. Um, so I'll just go in the off season and work. Go ahead. Get your microphone, and then we'll go over here. Hey, it's Chad Lysico again. Uh, Connor and Jordan, I guess, just uh, as real veterans in the program, if you both could just kind of address sort of uh, just the finale, and the, I know this isn't what you wanted, but just sort of, uh, I guess, the paint me a picture of, of what you're feeling right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, couldn't be feeling worse. Um, you know, everybody, there's only one team that's going to end on a win. But, uh, you know, leaving this game, it's probably the worst game we played all year. Uh, and I, I don't think it's close. So um, it's definitely not a good feeling on our stomachs right now. But, I mean, you know, we go from a championship on, a, on Sunday, really, really quick turnaround, come right out again. Um, so we didn't get to, get, get to really celebrate that much. So I'm sure like when we look back, um, you know, I mean, nobody thought we were even gonna make the tournament. So I guess on a, on a season, right, right now it feels pretty terrible, but you know, probably in a couple months, probably feel a little bit better. Michael Oskis at Cedar Rapids. Jor uh, Jordan was already asked this, but Keegan and Connor, uh, where was this game lost? Why was it lost? Uh, I think for us it, it was lost uh, just from missing open shots. I feel like um, we went six for nineteen or six for twenty-nine from the three-point line. That's uncharacteristic of us. Um, but I feel like we got a lot of open looks that we usually make, especially in the first half. They just weren't dropping. Um, but I feel like everything else defensively, um, we got stops when we needed them. Uh, we rebounded uh, well. Um, but yeah, I just feel like it was, we're missing shots we normally make. Yeah, just like what Keegan said, um, you know, definitely, definitely missed some shots. Felt like we had some untimely like turnovers. Uh, they had a couple like offensive rebounds in really big situations, um, and we didn't. You know, I, I, we just didn't capitalize on a lot of the opportunities that that we had. You know, they didn't. They just sent like five guys back on off or on defense, so we didn't really get to run. They they slowed the game way down. Uh, but at the end of the day, we just you know we just didn't play well. Uh, missed, a lot, missed a lot of shots, like Keegan said. Um, had a couple couple you know floaters roll out on us, stuff like that, and. Uh, Sometimes it's just the, the way the ball rolls. John Fans of Field of 68. Um, Keegan, the two guys to your right, uh, you know, what do they mean to you and, and kind of how they've laid the foundation and, and laid that patchwork for the, for the program overall? What have you seen from these teammates? Yeah, I think these two, um, especially our team last year, kind of laid the framework um, just for what the expectations are now um, at Iowa um, and just um, what you got to do to win here. Um, and we, these last two seasons, I feel like, um, kind of put the stamp on our program um, from what it was. Um, uh, and these two were part of it. Um, and uh, yeah, them two. And um, I feel like they're a really big part of our program. Uh, will forever be a big part of our program. Go ahead. Kennington, Lloyd Smith the third, Des Moines Register. Any of the players can answer this, but uh, Connor kind of touched on it winning on Sunday, short turnaround. Um, just kind of walk me through the, the preparation from Sunday to today. Um, you know, maybe how that affected you in rest and preparation and other things, um, you know, leading up to today. Uh, I think, um, obviously, winning a championship's um, a big deal. 
um, for a lot of teams, especially us, um, since we haven't won one in a while, 16 years. But um, the next day, I felt like we're right back to work. Um, and I felt like we had a good game plan going in. Um, just like I said, it was un we just did a bunch of uncharacteristic things. I'm on the offensive side of the ball, um, missed shots, but uh, I felt like we, we played hard, um, gave 100% the whole game, and um, I feel like a lot of our guys stepped up, um, especially in the second half. We could have went away easily, um, but we didn't, so. All right, if you want me, oh, one more, one more question for Sunathis. Go ahead. Go. Hey, Jordan, I, one more. Um, you know, NCAA record for games, uh, 179, I guess. Do you have any final words for Hawkeye fans out there that obviously are probably hurting? Uh, not as much as you, but, uh, but, but knowing this is a tough day. Just, just thanks for giving me a chance. You know, this has been some of the best years of my life. I can't even put into words what I got on my left, Keegan. Coach, it's meant to me. There's not a lot of people in the country that believed out, believed in me out of high school. You know, like, like I got faced a lot of you know, adversity coming back. You know, a couple of hip surgeries, dealt with a lot of injuries, and you know, I can honestly say this last game, I put my my heart and soul into this team, and you know, I just hopefully I left this jersey in a better place, and you no, know, I, I I found it, and that's all I wanted to do when I came here. That was the only goal I had. I, I didn't care about my individual statistics, nothing like that. You know, I just wanted to make Coach proud. I wanted to make my family proud, and this whole st entire state. I just want to thank every every single Hawkeye fan that you know. Hopefully, I inspired them to you know do something great with their lives, and I can't even put into words what it's meant to to be here wearing this jersey. All right, I want to thank our student athletes for your time. Thank you. All right, we'll now continue with Coach McCaffrey. Um, if you have questions for Coach McCaffrey, please raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone. Right here in the aisle here. John Fantz, a field of 68. Fran, uh, when that kid to your left has that emotion, I mean, it, it, it says it all that he wears the pride on his sleeve for Iowa. What, what are your thoughts on the legacy that he's left uh, on the program? You know, it, it says a lot about him, you know, the way he responded to the question, uh, like, you know, care about numbers. But you think about the numbers, and they're absolutely staggering. 2,000 points, more threes made than anybody else that ever played in the Big Ten, more assists than everybody that ever played at Iowa. Uh, that's somebody that takes great pride in wearing that jersey, which is what he said. Uh, but, you know, his leadership, his mental toughness, uh, it, it, it epitomizes what, you know, what a true competitor is. And he came here to make a difference. And you, know, you think back, and before his hip surgeries, he played a whole season in terrible pain, never asked to come out. I didn't even know half the things that were bothering him. He just showed up every day and practiced and played in the games and gave me everything he had. Uh, and then, you know, Double hip surgery is not easy, and we've had two guys that have had to go through it, two guys were sitting on my left, and that really is, is difficult, and it takes tremendous sacrifice and determination. And, you know, just watching him come back and perform at the level that he did and then come back to lead a team that needed his leadership. You know, he and Connor both had to lead a young team. We had to help, they had to help Keegan take his game to the next level and bring along Chris and Tony, and Joe T, Patrick, incorporate Philip. And that's, that's what character is. And that's what he has, that's what Connor has. And uh, you know, when you get into this business, you hope one day to be able to coach 
guys like that. And so I'm really proud. Go ahead, John. Fran, John Morrow with the Associated Press, and I hate to follow up such an emotional moment and, and how, how well you put that with a question just on, on, on this game and just how you feel you just couldn't get out of your own way, perhaps, in the early going and, and, and for an offense that was coming, you know, for an offense that you possessed to be held like, the, like as you were by, by, uh, by this opponent. Yeah, it's, you know, we had a couple fall out early and then we settled a little bit. We shot probably too many, we were one for 13 from three in the first half. I don't remember too many real bad ones. We had maybe one or two at the end of the shot clock. Uh, the game was really physical. Normally we get to the free throw line more often. Uh, you know, we typically expect to shoot more than two free throws in the second half, especially the way we were driving the ball. Uh, defensively, we were not where we needed to be. We were okay at times. We had a couple stretches where we were getting consecutive stops, but we didn't get them when we really needed them. Uh, executed fairly well with our sets coming down the stretch, but then uh, defensively, we had some other things we wanted to do when we didn't get that done. So, uh, you know, I think in a situation like this, you have to give respect to your opponent. Same question in the back, Andre. Coach, this game is about wins and losses. Obviously, this one didn't go the way you wanted it to go, but the response that you just got from Jordan and the emotion that you just got, how much does that pump you up or elevate you to get ready for next season? Does that make you even more ready for next season as, as you go on your journey, coaching journey at Iowa? Well, you know, I think, I think that's a, an incredibly astute observation, especially in a moment like this. Uh, we all want to celebrate. Everybody wants to win. And everybody puts the time in. And I shouldn't say, not everybody puts the time in, but most of us, I think, try. This is an incredibly long journey. And that's why you see the emotion. The emotion here and the emotion in the locker room is similar. Uh, because there's so much that goes into it, whether it be individual skill development sessions, 6 a.m. weight training sessions, practice in June, in July, August, right through September, October, and into a long season, grueling season in the Big Ten. And, you know, like you said, I mean, I've been doing this a while, 40 years. You know, when you come to work, that's what you want to see. If, if I have to somehow figure out a way to accomplish that for them, then I got the wrong guys, and the reality is we're not going to be successful. But if I have young people like Jordan Bohannon, Connor McCaffrey, Keegan Murray, and I could keep going, that bring a positive attitude, a love for their teammates, and a competitive desire, well, now that motivates the coaching staff that much more to help them maximize their potential, and get the most out of this tremendous opportunity. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of those guys. And Ralph, there's a question up front here. Fran, I don't want to take anything away from what Richmond did, but there was pretty um, Close call, I would say. Uh, late in the game, you guys were down three. Murray shoots, um, one of the Murrays shoots a three. Looks like he got fouled there. Um, any, I don't know what you managed to see of that. Have you seen a replay of that? But any thoughts on that call? I, I have not seen the replay. I, I, I just, I remember Chris's reaction, which was, you know, I think pretty dramatic. Uh, I think it was upsetting for him. I feel bad for him. A pretty good shooter. He's typically not going to shoot and miss by that much in that situation. But again, I mean, it's on the other side of the floor. So I think it would be inappropriate for me to say, oh, it was a terrible call. I mean, I, I'm 45 feet away from it. So uh, I'll just defer to the official on that. Over here in the blue. Hi, Fran. Chad Lace, Dakota Dwayne Register. Um, 
Looking, looking back on the game, does, would there be anything you would wish you could have done differently? And then just a follow-up, what will you remember about this season? Well, I'll remember how much fun it was to coach this group and how they stayed together and how they grinded you know, to win a Big Ten championship. I think I'll focus more on the positive than the negative. But like we say all the time, I mean, this is not a game of perfect, so you're not going to win every game. You're not going to be play a perfect game and execute a perfect game plan every time. Uh, but our guys kept fighting today. We, we, we were not playing as well as we normally would. We had shots that weren't going in. We had guys that had been playing extremely well. They were just a little bit off. And, and they just stayed the course. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. And I think any coach that would be sitting here in this situation would tell you that that's all we can ever ask of our guys. Just keep battling. Just keep trying to make plays. Just keep hustling on defense and just keep pounding that glass. And, uh, you know, play right through the last second and execute to perfection in trying to, manage, in trying to manage the clock, which I thought we did a good job of. Any further questions for Coach McCaffrey? All right, thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you. As a reminder, a recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA.